Welcome back to the Webbing O'Neill channel. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. For more information on HelloFresh, click the link in the description or the QR code up on screen. And I'll also tell you at the end of today's video about an amazing offer brought to you by HelloFresh. But first of all, it's match preview, Manchester United versus Aston Villa and Man United need goals. So how are we going to get goals in this one? I don't know how we're going to get goals. First thing I've got to say, we have to avoid getting beat. End of the year, can't, can't get beat. It's a sad, sad time what we're going through. And to get a defeat, I'm not looking forward to this game one little bit. I, honest to God, I'm not looking forward to it. And the main thing here is to avoid defeat. You say that and Aston Villa are on a great run. You know, a lot of people out there didn't expect them to be where they are in the table. And like we say, Manchester United now haven't scored a goal in the last four games can you actually see us bouncing back, you know, putting up a fight and actually getting goals? Problem here, Villa, they've got energy all over the pitch. We've seen them. Yeah, they had a little bit of a letdown against Sheffield United the other day, uh, but came back, got the equaliser. But that was the only blip they've had, really. And Eric Ten Hag and this team, at this moment in time, look lost. Mm. And I'm not sure what, what can change, really, what he can do. The only thing I can see is we need creativity in this team because we're not getting it up in the final third. Yeah. And, you know, I'll say it, Ericsson has got to come on. But my worry about that, he creates, he's, he's the only one when he's with Bruno, I see, able to do it. But he hasn't got 90 minutes in him, but he has to start the game. Got to start. So you think we need then more control in the midfield area and that creative spark. But again, we're going to go back to it. Once we do create any chances, you know, and we are one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, let's say, your heart's in your mouth and it's kind of niggling in your brain that, you know, we're going to miss this. Yeah. So surely the players are thinking that as well, if we're thinking that as fans. Well, listen, the other day there, after the West Ham defeat there, Eric Ten Hag's got to get these players up. He's got to get the confidence back into him and it's going to be very, very hard. And that's what seems to be missing, the confidence uh, once they're in the final third, United, it doesn't seem as though they know what they're doing. Uh, there's no player sort of like giving the ball and then looking for it again. It's all like each player is having to do it on his own. Uh, but that also then comes back down to the manager and the coaching staff. We mentioned it on your match reaction. You know, what is they actually doing in training? Because it looks like there's no plan. United here, what we've seen recently, it's all like moments really, isn't it? Hoping that a player produce something individually. Yeah, it's like moments and a player has to try and do it on his own. You know, you ask, and we're all asking, you know, what's going wrong? I mean, I listened to Luke Shaw's interview after the game the other day and he was asked the question like, what's going wrong? And he turned round. He says, I don't know what's going wrong. I don't know what, whether it's a lack of confidence or a lack of this or this isn't working. Well, if he doesn't know, how the hell do we? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, how can we judge what's going wrong when players on the pitch don't even understand anything what's going wrong? Or do you think he has got an idea of what's going wrong, but he's, you know, a little bit reserved in thinking, well, I can't really say that in a public domain kind of thing against any of his teammates, against the manager, because surely they're there day in, day out at training and he must know what's going wrong. Yeah, but he, he must know what's going wrong, but he's going wrong as well. You know, it's not... I'm asking for Luke Shaw to name names or say, uh, pick out these players or whatever. Luke Shaw's part of the problem as well. Mm. You know, the experienced players, they're not helping the young players. The young players seem to be like running and doing the bit, but they're not getting the help. Mm. Uh, and people like Luke Shaw, people like your Rashford and all that, uh, your Bruno, your Scott McTominay, they're letting other young players down. On the pitch, to me, I, I don't know what you think, but it's a lack of confidence in all in all departments. Uh, and Eric Ten has got a big job. A lot of players here really seem to be going through the motions. I, I, the other day, I seen too many players smiling, laughing and joking and all that with the opposition, you know, on and off the pitch before the game, after the game. I mean, that's not what Man United are all about. You know, what we need, we need players there able to create on the pitch and it's not happening. Hoyland, Anthony, Garnacho look to shadow of what really good players they are. They were they were abysmal and there's a reason for it and there's no creativity 
in this team and it has to change. Yeah, if, look, you go past previous results, apart from the West Ham game, you know, he does tend to change it quite a bit, Eric Tenag. You look at the West Ham, you know, the two centre-halves, obviously down to injuries as well and poor form. Well, that was a 10th different partnership we've had at centre defence this year. Now, do you expect Willie Cambuela to start again alongside Johnny Evans? You know, is Varane going to be fit? He, he did miss out due to an illness, but he will have a much, much tougher game if he does start against these Villa forwards. I mean, you, you do have to look, I mean, at all the injuries what, what we've had. It has disrupted each first 11. It's not a regular first 11 what's going out there. I mean, for Varane to be out the other day and then Willie comes in and, you know, it wasn't what I was expecting. It's not what the players are expecting. You're either injured or you're ill. It just keeps going on and on and on. And I do feel sorry for Ten Hag because he's having to put up with, like, these are my tactics. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to set up, get but a style I understand, of play. I understand but that. It, it's not happening. I'm worried. Same. I've got to be honest with you. I'm actually worried. And I'm worried for the manager because, you know, these injuries just keep seeing like they're occurring week on week. He gets one player back and then loses two. And you can't get any rhythm at all. But as also, he's not blameless here, Ten Hag. We've got to start seeing some sort of plan on the pitch where, you know, these players are working together. We're not seeing these players work together enough. And when they're going forward into these forward areas, yeah, some individual mistakes that have cost us where they're not putting the chances away where they should do. But we're not seeing any sort of pattern of play. You know, Hoyland, you know, does he make that run near post? Does he hold back? You know, does he make a run to the back post for a cross to go over? It's like they're not too sure, like, if they've ever played with each other before. I agree. I agree with you. And it's a big worry for me. Yeah, I agree with you on that point. Well, listen, you know, we've got Villa today, right? And it's as simple as this. We've got to see this game through. It's a tough period and all we can hope for is pray that we come good in the new year. And He has mentioned that, I know, Yeah, he's mentioned it. I've mentioned it, that we come good in the new year, but it's been poor. Well, I hope it's, you're right. It's been, well, I hope I'm <laughs> I right. I hope you're right. But there's, there's players there what just aren't good enough. But to be honest with you, looking at the Villa, they'll open up. If a team opens up, then United have got a chance, but they have to set on the right foot. It's as simple as that. We I understand need the fight. what you're I need the fight. I need players to run. I need players to sweat. And I need to need to see them work for each other and create. Now, Villa will give us opportunities today. They will give us opportunities because of the way they play. They're coming to Old Trafford. I don't think they Villa want, will be They that. want to score. They want to win. It, chances Listen, will be created. I don't think Villa will be scared at all. I did say they to would be. Old Trafford today about conceding chances to Man United when we've not scored a goal in the last four games. They will not be worried about Manchester United today at all. I can guarantee you that because we're not scoring goals. Villa will play how they've been playing all season and they'll stick to that game plan. And they've got a manager on the sideline. Look, you've got to look at his record. It speaks for himself. A very tactically astute manager. He knows what it's all about. And if they have to change from plan A to plan B, he can do it in a flash. Oh, yeah. And this Villa team today, I expect him to come here with fuller confidence. And like you've just said, if these players aren't up for it today, they've not got even that fight, what is the bare minimum you expect. We'll get done a cricket score here today. I Believe me, I think we will do. And... Yeah, but the thing and is, if you just, look... Yeah, I, I'm just at the point where you can't see anything where you, you could probably improve it. You know, you're bringing certain players in. You've seen Kobe Manu against West Ham. You know, he's been fantastic. We've all been singing his praises and he'll, he'll, he'll only get better, that kid. A long future here, hopefully, at Manchester United. But you're seeing the mis mistakes even coming through him, like we did at West Ham. And it seems to spread through the team at times. Yeah, but the thing is, you're looking at today's game. And what you see Villa doing is coming to attack United. They will be open. And if United are good enough and they're up for it and they play the counter-attacking football, if that's what it boils down to, then United will create chances. And this Villa will give United chances. And you've just got to hope that the chances what are there, they take them. So from yeah. the bad, bad year... Let's hope it ends on a positive note. Well, we've still got Nottingham Forest to play as well away, haven't we? So, and they've got a new manager. Will they have a new manager bounce as well? We'll soon see, but hopefully not for Manchester United when we play them. But yeah, today, I'm not confident. I've got to be honest with you. And a lot of games I go into, I'm always looking forward to it. I'm up for it. And I always expect Manchester United to win. You know, I don't know what that is. Is that the naivety of the Manchester United supporter? But I'll always back the team. But... 
we need to see a massive improvement today to get even anything from the game because this is a very well-drilled Aston Villa team and they've got to be respected. But Manchester United today, they need to be up for it. They need to start working together, communicating together and getting some passes together in and around the midfield, the wide areas. And let's start communicating up front. Get some balls into the box and let's get players on the end of it. Yeah. But that's for me. Anyway, I could rant a lot more, to be honest with you, but I'm worried about today, but I'm up for it. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. And I just want to see an improvement from this Manchester United team. So I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us today. Like I said at the start of the video, we've brought an amazing offer from HelloFresh just for you guys. Link in the description, the QR code up on screen. And I'm about to tell you about this offer right now. Enjoy the match, Reds. Are you ready to upgrade your match day routine? Well, with HelloFresh, there's no more faffing about at the shops, ending up getting caught up offside because your partner wants to go back into the shops for one last look, which means you missing out on the game. Yeah, we've all been there. You don't have to be Ronaldo or Messi in the kitchen. I'll be honest with you, I don't know my knife and forks from my spoons. But HelloFresh's easy-to-use instructions makes every football fan a kitchen maestro and gives you the result your taste buds want. HelloFresh has got you covered with a wide selection of fresh, tasty foods delivered straight to your front door in a variety of portion sizes. So you can use your match day build-up to prep, cook up a storm in the kitchen, whilst you sit back, relax with your friends, family, crack open your favourite juice and cheer on your favourite team. With HelloFresh, you can bring that match day magic back into your very own home and even score off the pitch. Imagine this, instead of splashing out the cash on a fancy restaurant, bring your date night back home and whip up a HelloFresh masterpiece. Plus, you'll also save money in your back pocket and you can put that towards your match day tickets to watch your team play live. So what you're waiting for, help support the channel, eat a healthier lifestyle with HelloFresh. Click the link in the description or the QR code on screen and get the result your taste buds wanted.